toroids. These figures are a toroid and a sketch of the cross section of a toroid as if it had been sliced like a bagel. You can see that a toroid is basically just a solenoid where the ends have been twisted around and are touching each other. So a toroid is kind of like a donut shape. And what we're showing in the right figure is we're imagining that we have sliced that donut or we've sliced that bagel through the middle. And what we're seeing here is each of the windings of the wire. And you can see that the little dots here indicate that the current right where I'm pointing is coming out of the page at us. And then on the outside here where I'm pointing with my pen now, the current is going into the page. Notice on the cross section that I is directed out of the page in the inner windings, that's right here, and into the page in the outer windings. Assume that there are N total windings or loops and AL means Amperian loop. So what we're showing here is we're showing three Amperian loops. One inside the toroid, one within the enclosed current area of the toroid, and then one on the outside. And what we want to do is we want to determine the magnitude of the magnetic field at those locations of Amperian loops one, two, and three explain or show work as needed. So whenever we find the magnitude of a magnetic field, we always use Ampere's law, which looks like that. Now, here's what we can do. Look at Amperean loop number one. There is no current that's enclosed in there. For Amperean loop number one, the magnetic field magnitude is zero because the I enclosed equals zero. There is no current that is enclosed within Amperian loop number one. Let's skip to Amperian loop number three. What about that? Well, Amperian loop number three is way out here. But look what happens with Amperian loop number three. There are N windings of current, N currents, you might say, that are coming out of the page. But then also there are N currents that are going into the page. Same answer for Amperian loop number three. The magnetic field has to be zero because the I enclosed is equal to zero. Look at Ampere's law. You see, if I enclosed equals zero, when you integrate DL, when you go around the horn, that isn't going to be zero. So that necessarily means that the magnetic field magnitude has to be zero. If the I enclosed is zero, then the magnitude of the magnetic field has to be zero. Well, what about for Amperian loop number two? I could have drawn R in for Amperian loops one and three, but I didn't want to mess up the diagram. So Amperian loop number two, I will draw the R in for that. It goes to right there. Let's use Ampere's law. Ampere's law says mu naught. Now, what's the total I that is enclosed? And you can look here, and you can see that there is a net current flow that is coming out of the page at us, and that's equal to N times the current that's flowing through that coil. Each coil has a current I, and there are N of them that are coming out of the page at us on the inside of that loop. And that needs to be numerically equal to the magnitude of the magnetic field. We're going to dot that, dot product with the DL. Because of symmetry, at any value of R within there, the magnetic field is going to be constant, so essentially I can take that integral and I can put it right there. And when we integrate dl, we're just going around the circle, so that's 2 pi r. The magnetic field is going to be mu naught n i divided by 2 pi r. You can see for a toroid, within the toroid, the magnetic field is not quite constant. It does depend on how far away we are from the center of the toroid, according to this R right here in the denominator. You might remember that for a solenoid, particularly an ideal solenoid, it didn't matter where we were within the solenoid, the magnetic field was constant. That's not quite the case with a toroid. However, with a toroid, on the outside of a toroid, the magnetic field is zero. And that was not the case for a solenoid. For a solenoid, there was a 
non-zero magnetic field on the outside, but for a solenoid, the magnetic field was constant within. For a toroid, it's not quite.